This is a uh, <coughs> video for product 310 2021. Uh, I'll draw a hammer. Um, you can see here, this is a framing hammer, uh, life size, I suppose. Uh, I think there's a smaller hammer. We can do it on a different scale. Looking for a different hammer. So hammers are actually quite a bit of quite a bit of variation. So but they tend to be sized for the hand. Uh, framing hammers have a sort of a knurled end. Uh, this one has also a magnet in the head. Uh, it's all one piece. And it has the hickory handle. So I'm gonna draw it <clears throat> life size uh, in like a power line, I suppose. I'll aim for slightly head down. Uh, so we'll, I'm aiming to see the top of this because uh, I'm kind of interested in these uh, tightening, I don't know what they're called. Basically, you put the handle through and you hammer these into the top, tightens the wood against the head. Uh, if you want to get it out, you just chisel these guys out of there. Uh, there is some slightly subtle details uh, at the top, which we'll do at the end, but it's fairly squarish. Uh, it's obviously a forged head. Uh, it's made by Vaughn in the US. It doesn't say if it's forged. It looks forged. Uh, so a fairly simple shape at the top. Uh, most of it is handle, obviously. So again, the argument for the big sheet of paper. So we'll be able to draw the head fairly reasonably sized. It's not much happening down through here, except for the fact that the center line is kind of deviates. Uh, so it looks like the center line goes from this corner down here. So you can see that up to there. So we'll be making a big deal about that. It's also not round in any way. So my initial plan, which was to uh, use a sort of isometric 3Dification is not gonna work. So, but we will be taking some shortcuts. Uh, I'm not gonna draw this, especially the handle in ultra detail. Um, Cause again, this would be going to the CAD or to somebody who's already making these guys and you would say, just make it again. So we'll spend quite a bit of time with the head, I suspect. So as usual, now we're going to have a center line going down, so we'll start with the center line through the page. Uh, look at it from time to time. It's just putting it slightly off in here. Um, just looking for the middle. Again, you can fold the page or do whatever you want. This, I'm just going to go for and attempt a fairly uh, straight line through the center of the area. I uh, can't use the edge of the page because it's too far away. Fairly lumpy. And I'm just going to actually use the hammer itself to uh, get its size. So I can get the proportions of the head immediately. And just start to kind of lay in the major events. So for example, where maximum bend happens and how far out the bend is so temptation here is to draw the whole thing in isolate in orthographic as if you're looking straight down on it not much use uh, we can't get a good volume from that so for example you'd miss it's thin here and thicker down here so what I want to do though is figure out where the main events are and what my directions are. I want to look down. I'm going to have maybe the head pointing down to the down to the left here. So if we're looking for again isometric or isometric-ish, we're going to have the head pointing down. This will be the top. However, one thing I am interested in is where is center of this of the striking head 
the face, I suppose. And I'm just actually looking down the, across the hammer and looking for the uh, center line here. Now, because we're using a kind of an isometric, what I'm going to do here is actually look for the center of the hammer and put a mark on the hammer itself. So, center of the hammer is on this middle. Again, I should probably find out what that's called. Thing. And get the length. So, this is the head of the hammer. And we have a size already and all the rest. So, if I want here, I can find a piece of scrap and actually get my dimensions and kind of keep it somewhat organized. Make sure I've got that fairly good. Not too far off. So looking for my ellipse as usual because it is an elliptical shape. Now how far down, how long is it? That's kind of oh, that's square. No surprise, I suppose. So you'll notice this measurement is the depth of the head. It's no surprise, really. Like it, this sort of stuff happens all the time. You find the intent everywhere. Right? So big, big time saver. Find out this sort of thing if I could draw it correctly. And I'm using quite a thick pencil here, so it's a little much. So if I want, just a bit thinner. That line was getting too thick too fast. So a thinner pencil, still a B, just a 0.7 this time instead of a 2. Now if we look at the hammer, again, just keep it down here. We can see there's a path here. There's been a bit of a sniff as well. So that was my mouth opening. Again, because we have the hammer, I can use measurements directly off it. Parallel reality, parallel the sketch. I'm looking at this here, thinking this doesn't look quite right. There's a thin thinning here, which is not right. So I want this to keep keep this symmetrical look. Again. We can measure directly off the part. We can also just kind of use a piece of paper. It's probably, it's about, it's almost the width of the uh, diameter of the, th of the uh, striking face or the head, but not quite. So we'll go slightly smaller. There's my head. So what I'm actually doing here is just kind of constructing this by, you know, by piece by piece going along. So I'm moving into this shape now here. So how deep does it go? It's more or less on the center line. So we can actually just we can measure it. Uh, one way to do is hold the pencil and move it down or just kind of try and get it by eye. You can also get it with your little scrap piece of red paper. Whatever works best. Now keep in mind this is a little rectangle that we're going to make here. So we've got a top for now. That's the mark I just made, just make sure. So parallel, parallel, all this stuff is parallel. Trying to find its radius, roughly. It's not, it's not perfectly circular. This will give us an idea of the shape. Now how far back does it go? Again, measuring from the top here. Again, it does curve in space. So, going, trying to get the right measurements here. And again, because we're an isometric, we can kind of more or less I measure direct. So 
So I'll just look the hammer curves down, just looking for that curve. We notice here it's fairly straight almost. It curves slightly and then straight. So this is our center line. The width. Actually, just hold them sink. Now there's going to be the nail pullers in the middle. We'll ignore that for now. So we kind of end up here. So we want to follow this line. It's going to be the bottom. So again, parallel, parallel. Goes quite far along. Just going to put a mark where I suspect it starts to curve. So straight-ish to here. Sorry, I'm going too far too early here. It starts to curve here. So then down. Doesn't look quite right. So got this proportion issue here. So I know that it's more or less the cheek here, I suppose, the way it would be called, is kind of quite thin. So I've made it too long. And then just Try to match it up shape wise. So there's my cheek as if it's straight. Now, one of the dilemmas is, of course, it flares out. So we can kind of cheat and show it flaring out. So if we look at this, All right, so it does flare. Cheek flares out. So just looking for this line through space. Quite a sharp corner and up at the top here it's going to start following this but the, the material that joins the head or the striking face to the main head is curved so we'll have something in here now again we could map this out correctly and all this stuff but we can also just have a look we can notice here that there's a groove to hold the nail in the magnet so we have to be a little aware of that so at the top here we're going to have a flat surface Again, I'm just kind of doing it by eye. It's one-to-one -one scale, so I can kind of get it going. And we will have a shape like so. So through the middle. Where's the middle? Right there. Pointing across. So there's an interruption, like almost like a, a lathe shape being interrupted there. Otherwise, it's quite sharp. So there's going to be some shape in here. We're not quite sure yet what it's going to look like, but it does. It is symmetrical around the head, the striking head, striking face. So we should. Sorry, I should have looked up the names of these things before I started. So I'm going to make a guess here and try and keep it somewhat symmetrical around the center, the center of my face. It looks better. I think this one's a little thin. So again, it's about the same. So we'll go for this with both using the scrap. You'll notice when I'm doing this, the scrap just gets, unlike Mac 200, it's quite rough. And then just looking at it from isometric and physical reality, kind of blends together. Looking okay. Top face. Just kind of head across. And we're going to end up down here again using my scrap. I did that sort of flare. Oh, didn't do that quite right. So I'm just trying to. It's going to flare in, so if we were straight, it would be slightly curved up. So we have to come down here. So just trying to get the right shape. So we have a curve. This is a complex shape, so there's some hand finishing here, so we ground this. So it's just going to be a bit of a guess because we know where we need to connect. And again, CAD would fill this in. So on this one, you can see it's quite flat. 
just to jar you up. So there's our sort of overall shape. Next thing next. Um, when we started this, we found this sort of collar part. It's right here. Now, so this is our end of handle here, end of forging. Sticks out quite a bit, actually. It's going to be more or less directly under this. Sort of a bit of lost space. So I'm looking at this coming down and through. That's not parallel. So kind of using this front striking face. I don't know what the, there's a name for this probably too. So there's our line directly below. Let's offset it slightly. That's the beginning of our piece. How wide is it? Through the center. Uh, just drawing a contour line down through the side piece here and the center line. Missed it. Now, as we look down upon it, there's going to be some hidden stuff here. We're just going to be able to see this bottom part of the head kind of sneaking out. And then kind of hiding around the back of this part in here. So there's going to be this sort of arrangement of parts, arrangement of surfaces in here. It's kind of all one piece, but it's a forged piece of steel. Below that we have the wooden handle starting. So I'm proposing it's shaped something like this. So there's the beginning of our handle. And then again, we can kind of have a look at it here. It's looking a bit big. Like isometric does stretch things, but not too much. So again, just keep an eye where it's kind of poking out. If I look at it in isometric, I'm just looking down. It seems to kind of come out a little further in. I've also lost my centering. It was too far back. So I want to stay on the center line-ish. So I deviated slightly from my center line. And then again, getting quite sketchy here, but I just need to show the shape. So here's our beginning. Center line has shifted. Again, it's not a Enormous big deal. I did screw up some stuff down through there. Right, the key thing is to keep the head correctly centered over the handle. Don't do too bad. There should be maybe a little bit bigger gap here. It's a very sketchy way to do this. Just trying to give the viewer up with what's going on here. I'm trying to this center line is what I'm trying to shift over towards. It's not too bad. Now in a way we're kind of into the easy part here, which is where the handle is offset from the center line. So if I look at this, it's almost interesting. If the center line that we're interested in, which I think goes here from this edge here, actually meets the front surface right there. 
So at this point, the front edge of the hammer handle uh, touches the center line, which is interesting. Now down here, if we have our adjusted center line, again, there's always some uh, shifting around. What I'm going to do is try and sketch in the actual center line as if I was drawing a line down through the hammer here. So I know it has to come up to here and join here. It's fairly curved again. You have to keep in mind that somebody's doing this by hand. Uh, sorry, fairly straight-ish above. So just kind of aiming up. Taking into account that this will be done by hand. So just trying to find that edge. Keeping in mind that hand-made pieces are the hardest things to sketch. So our front edge, again, we can get a width out of that. Again, parallel reality, parallel on the sketch. Sorry, turn it the right way. So this edge right here is what we've just drawn. And it's about that wide. It curves back into kind of a squashed circle. So again, parallel, parallel. And the center line. And we can measure a direct off the hammer. And if we're we're drawing the back as well, I suppose here. So it's not a big deal. So that's the back of our piece. There's a chamfer here and all the rest of it. But this one actually stays it leans back slightly. So I'm gonna draw the back of this. And here we are at the middle. Parallel, parallel, parallel. So that's its minus as its minimum thickness up there. So we go up the chamfer fairly flat actually. Once we hit this inflection point, we start going back and we end up with this sort of reflex. So on the back of this, this is my midline. We bend around, go beyond, and then come back out. So there's my start. Now, last things, we need to get this little height here. I can fire up. Does this guy come? There's our front. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see this edge very well. It's going to be really flat onto the eye. It's okay. But not, it's unfortunate, but what do you do? Um, we need this chamfer. So what I'm going to actually do is draw the chamfer around the base first. It's got this nice angle comes up, it's getting a little busy. So what I'm gonna do is just lighten this out and clean up. You'll be able to see a little edge of the handle coming around. And on the back, the same. I wanna emphasize sort of a, kind of like a bulge on the front edge. In the middle here, it's more or less elliptical at this point. So again, parallel, parallel. So we have our tendencies now. So I know I need to, it's not too thick here. So thinning it down. Kind of flat as well. 
We got dungeons in here, so just coming around. Trying to get the shape fairly flat. Getting some problems. Upside down, which is not helpful. So we have the shape here. Got some choices to make. I believe that the second front line we drew is best. Oh, wrong one. So I just erased the wrong one. Sorry, so coming through. There's our center mark and the outside silhouette. Tangent on both. And we've got our, what I'm going to do here is also connect my fairly big um, chamfer down here. Keep in mind it goes all the way around the back and then there's a fold here almost so I'm just going to accentuate that. Coming up, we've kind of got the same shape, so we're not nothing crazy happening here. And it does have a slight swelling. So we're going to have the silhouette following the center line all the way up for the center contour. Apologies quite a bit here. And then next down into the handle. Again, if you're like me, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is maybe not clear enough. for an edge. Just trying to get it so that I can see what's going on. Draw without running into the hammer itself. Uh, it's great to be able to do this on large sheets of paper and try and do it all in one pass. See some errors down there. It's not so bad actually. It does get quite. I've used this hammer, I suppose, frequently over the years, and it does. It's hard to show this actually in the sketch, but it does get quite thin right there. It's how you shift around. Uh, you can kind of feel the end of the hammer, hammer coming up without really kind of automatically almost. So it's very easy hammer to use. Now we have this vagueness down here right now. So one thing we can do is try and show it uh, clearly. So we can actually emphasize the underside with the right pencil, of course. Um, try and show in the chamfer. It might actually not be the way it is, if that makes sense. Uh, but we do need to show the chamfer better. So what I'm going to do here is kind of false sketch the chamfer. So rather than depending on the actual uh, 
uh, visible shape, so we're kind of drawing something in here that you wouldn't be able to see so well. For those of you who are watching this in our outreach, sorry, but trying to emphasize that what's there that we might lose a little bit of exactly how it looks. Remember that this edge is right on the center line. Let me that out. So we have a contour. So one of the things I want to make clear here, <laughs> not to draw the wrong line, um, is to make make it clearer that the side of this thing is fairly flat. So it kind of. It's, it's bent in three dimensions, but the side contour, it does, it bends, but it's not too, it doesn't swell or flare out. So what I want to do is make sure that I am catching it correctly. It does flare at the top. And kind of comes in and down. At the top there is definitely sort of a neck where the wood uh, flattens out a bit. So we'll add that. Um, again, depends on what you want to add, but you can definitely show like the flatness of the or the bulging of the neck around in here of the handle. Sorry. So once you've got one, kind of show some stuff. Um, it's up to you if you want to uh, show the neural or the, the sort of texture. I kind of like it. So it's definitely rounded and it's in a linear pattern. And it is one of the big events of this hammer. It's got this uh, pattern on the top. Now, it's also ground off. You can see that on the camera. So somebody, it's probably quite a bit sharper before and then somebody ground it down. You don't really want these ultra um, uh, teeth on there because uh, it'll just Kind of grab too much. Uh, now that I've used it, it's kind of flattened out a bit. So rather than getting trying to draw little pyramids, I'm actually just going to draw the flattened out. So that as it is now, squares on the top surface. Uh, for some reason, I quite like doing this. Uh, they're all sorts of shapes if you look at it closely. Uh, so it's not ultra precise. But it's easy to just use the grid. I draw it in one corner. So it's almost like somebody's uh, doing this on purpose. Or uh, doing it by hand, not on purpose. Sorry, pulling myself. So when I get to here, just trying to kind of give an impression of it being ground flat on this edge here. Some of them might still be squarish through here. And then we might have a, a semblance of a triangle in here. So we're just drawing a little reconstruction in here.
again, for those watching this going, oh my god, it's so boring. It is boring to draw these, but in another way, they're not very, <laughs> not very good. Um, the point is just to add some detail here to show that this is a main event in this designed thing, this hammer. Uh, it grips the nail as you whack it. Um, it's a big deal to, uh, I think, anyway, to uh, show some other stuff. And we're going to make a big deal also about the texture of here. So, to me, I'm going to big deal about this shape in here. However it looks. Don't need to get too carried away here. I forgot to do the... the nail holder. Come back to that in a second. Is this realistic? No, of course not. Like, I'm just trying to show that the head has a fairly serious texture around the edges. Sorry, so we've got our uh, nail. Sorry, I don't have a nail here. Some of that sits in there. Screw. Um, what we have here is actually a nail holder. So you can put a nail in there and uh, one hand uh, reach up and knock it in uh, well out of, so you don't have to hold the nail and your and swing the hammer. Equal flat thumb. So we've got this sort of notch here with a bat with a, a uh, magnet in it. It's a, again, just doing this really fast. So just making a groove in the head here. And again, we're going to have this groove here as well. I'm going to erase this in a second. There will also be a magnet in here. This should correspond to this flat over here on the other side, the nail holder or the striking face. I'm not sure. So I'll just put a contour line on the magnet to say I am a physical thing. And we've got some uh, problems here. We've got some texture needs to disappear. I'm using my little piece of paper as an erasing shield. And just put it back here. Now again, we're going to have this sort of great texture in here where it's been eaten away. I'm going to follow that around. And the hammer is rounded. And I can kind of absorb that texture into the silhouette. Make a big deal about those edges. So it becomes very clear that there's something going on there. There's a channel or something. Try and make this thing equally visible. Again, contour lines for our help our viewer out. So that they can, if they want, they can kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Now, at the back, it's actually kind of not straight. It's almost rounded. So we've got this middle point here. It's at the back. It comes quite far along. Again, we can kind of just measure it off. That's the top surface. You have a thickness to it, and it heads off kind of 
quite sharply in so it gets thick quite fast. So there's our nail holder. And just emphasizing that shape because again it's one of the things that says hammer. If it doesn't look long enough I just I'm keeping an eye on this it is fairly sinks down to quite a small little uh, groove before it vanishes. I want to emphasize how thin that is compared to the thickness of the nail puller end. A little bit of cheap. All that's left is this top piece. It's quite close to the end. It's more, well, obviously directly above. We can help the viewer out by showing this piece of wood within. It's actually not elliptical, it's kind of more lozengy, bigger at the front. So let's sketch that in. And goes quite close to the edge of the, the cheeks of the head. Inside are three in projection shapes. Now, whoever hammered this in, it did it on all sorts of angles. Now, it's important to make that clearly part of the handle or different material. So, I'm going to put quite a bit of color or lead in there to say I am different material right, similar to what's coming for this sort of interface here I want to make it very clear that this is a different piece right so that's like it's probably as dark as any other part of it, even though it's quite smooth, right? So when it was made, it was ground uh, with the wood in, obviously. Very small interface. But I'm going to em emphasize it to say this is a piece of wood versus a piece of oh, the handle. We haven't uh, labeled it yet. Wood versus metal. Now, this piece here is quite a small uh, deviation one thing you can do is kind of show it growing out because uh, it doesn't really have an actual edge right in there one of the advantages of sketches is you can kind of imply starting up is a more of a contour line which then becomes actually an edge as it comes around uh, i might want to darken Example the inside of the nail puller. To say I am down here. Another thing you can do is just to show some shape. <coughs> Excuse me. And some uh idea of shape and overlap and all that sort of stuff you can kind of do a bit of smudging in there just to uh, show the casting or the forging shape be straight here so slowly yeah and this is entirely up to you but to me the trying to show um, different profiles. And also to emphasize that a piece of it is metal and uh, polished, the other piece isn't.
Find it and stick it with the print. Just emphasize the bottom edge of it. Cut edges. And again, because this is polished, or you can maybe put a little bit of color on there, it doesn't matter. Again, it's entirely up to you how you run this sort of stuff. And you could continue on uh, doing quite a bit of work on the handle now, for example. Um, what I'm going to do is just run a darker, oops, sorry, darker edge around the whole thing just to say I'm all in one assembly. Emphasize things like uh, edges, uh, deviations, which really draws the eye to how the part changes from one part to the next. Gonna make a big deal about this end here. Going actually almost overboard, just trying to say there's some real texture going on here. Well, this is quite smooth, so I'm not getting too carried away here. Maybe even thin it down. This is also the top, so you might want to be a little bit more hesitant. Emphasize in things like, for example, small thicknesses at the end of the claw. Shape of the cheek. And then where the bottom of the armor comes out. So this is not clear enough to me, so just darken that up. And back down the hand. Oh. You know, and you could put a hand on here if you wanted, or whatever, if you really can, or great at drawing people's hands down at the bottom of the part. I uh, tend to do quite a bit of darkness here just to kind of make it look as if it's grounded somehow. Again, this is not clear what's going on down here, so a little bit of cross hatching to emphasize the chamfer. And the bottom face is probably going to be quite dark, at least. We do now have to make it at least darker than the chamfer. Otherwise it all starts to look like one surface. Hatching. Again, you can, as much as you wish, does that help or not? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, color would be next, I suppose, if you wanted to colorize this handle. Um, Make sure it comes through to the top. Just trying to uh, get this underside a little darker so it kind of sticks out a bit better. So I'm just trying to show some contour lines to improve the shape, essentially. All right, and you know, where does this contour line go? You could kind of fill it in a, lot, a bit. It's up to you again. So 
At this stage, you're just trying to show shape better. Uh, make it clear what's going on. Uh, resist the urge to overwork it, though. Uh, there we go. That's a overview one to one framing hammer. So you get it all on one screen. Hold on here. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the, the thing and the sketch all in one go. There we go. There's our framing hammer, uh, one to one scale. Again, it magnifies slightly and isometric, but the idea isn't so bad. And then just uh, shift it around a bit here to get a good view for the YouTube video. There we go. Thanks for watching and over to you.